started up a little while ago and I've been very busy with school lately so I haven't had really much time to do astrophotography on top of all the cloudy skies we've had here. So I decided since it's a nice Sunday evening and it is clear skies, the moon is out though, but I'm going to take my opportunity of clear skies to photograph an uh, interesting target that I have never shot before, uh, the beautiful reflection nebula of the constellation Cepheus, the Iris Nebula. The Iris Nebula is a reflection nebula in the constellation of Cepheus, and it's a really beautiful target to photograph, especially if you live under dark skies. Like me, I kind of live under dark skies, Portal 4, that's pretty dark for a lot of people. So I'm hoping with this setup right here, I'll be able to pick up some of that nice dust and uh, reflection nebula surrounding the, the central Iris Nebula, the bright, brightest part of the Iris Nebula. So the Iris Nebula is located in the constellation Cepheus, so that's pretty close to Polaris, the North Celestial Pole. So that does mean it never goes below the horizon. It just It's a circumpolar constellation. Right when it gets dark is the best time to start photographing it. So that is when I'm gonna photogra start photographing it, right when it gets dark. Um, I think it's gonna be clear all night. There might be some clouds later in the night, but I won't be photographing it by then. I hope I can get about two hours on it. I'll be, able, I'll be happy if I get about two hours on it. Um, around with that data. So this is the setup I'll be using to photograph the Iris Nebula and let's get a closer look at some of the gear I'm using. So for gear, first let's start off with this Skywatcher Star Adventure here. It's extremely good at taking uh, tracked exposures of the night sky and if you properly polar line it here, I can take pinpoint um, sharp stars at, at 300 millimeters. So it's pretty good for a little star tracker like this. Very, I really recommend this one. Um, then the next piece of gear I have is my Canon camera, my, my astrophotography camera. I'm getting it modified soon, so I'm very excited about that. It's the Canon Rebel 500D T1i camera. And then we also are using the very uh, well-known affordable Canon 75 to 300 millimeter zoom lens. And uh, surprisingly, it does take very good pictures of space for the price. I think I got it used off eBay for like $50, so it's really good, really good buy. It's taken my my most recent um, Andromeda Galaxy and Pallades photos. So, really good lens. I'm using that to shoot the iris tonight. Um, along with some little accessories here, but very handy. The um, newer shutter release cable, just so I can program a sequence of exposures and not have to be clicking them manually. Um, then we have dew heater and a little USB power bank right here. This power bank, I need to get a better one because it doesn't last that long but it usually does last long enough to keep the dew off my camera most of the night when I'm imaging. But yeah, this is a very good accessory to have, especially if you're, it gets cold at night and the lens can frost up because it's happened to me a couple times where all my exposures are ruined because of a dew problem on my lens. So this is the setup I'm gonna be using tonight. It's a really good uh, affordable setup and I would recommend it to any beginners including myself who want to get their feet wet with astrophotography because it's capable of some pretty amazing photos.
Hello guys, so I am back now and it's about 6.30. So it's time to bring out the setup and pull our line. Um, so after pull our lineman, I'm gonna go find the Iris Nebula and the sky shouldn't be too hard. And then I'll focus, first focus, then find the target. Then I'll set the sequence of exposures on my intervalometer cable. I'll probably be shooting about 100 two minute exposures. Um, I just set it to 100 because usually the battery dies before then, so I want to make sure it's plenty of exposures, um, just run the battery out. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. I'll probably be shooting at ISO 800 around there. The temperature is cool tonight, which helps a lot with noise, so that's good with my, for my old DSLR camera. And I'll probably be shooting around f5.6. So let's go pull a line the Star Adventure now, and then we can get shooting. So right here on the screen we have a bright star and what you're going to want to do is just focus it up until it's as pinpoint of a point as you can get it. So with this lens it's always going to be pretty bloated but we want to find the place that is the, the sharpest. So right about there is where it's going to be sharp, sharpest here. Um, I have it on 10 times zoom, that's the best for focusing. But with this lens all the way zoomed out to 300 millimeters, the stars are always going to be a little bloated, so as we have to deal with. But um, yeah, focusing is very important. Make sure that um, stars are as pinpoint as possible. Hello everyone, so I'm back, and the and the imaging session is going really well now, imaging the iris nebula. The exposures coming through the camera look really good. Um, I did lower them down to, instead of 2 minute subs, 1 minute exposures, because the 2 minute subs were too washed out because of the bright moon in the sky. But as the night goes on, the moon is getting lower in the sky, so that should help a lot. So imaging session is going really good. I hope to be able to get a lot of one minute subs to stack enough data to form a good image at the end of the video. I hope I can bring out some of that dust. I'm not too sure. This is my first time imaging this target, so I'm, I'm going to share whatever image I get at the end of the video. I, I hope it turns out good. But I also want to say, everyone, thank you so much for 300 subscribers. Uh, we're, re we're nearing 300 subs, and I really appreciate that. And there's not much for me to say here, so I think I'm going to end the video. Um, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, clear skies. <laughs>